when Judge Lauren Lake gets emotional on paternity court. Because it was if Mr. Met broke me down now. These three siblings with two different mothers are in court today to claim paternity from the man who denies fathering any of them. Mr. Heron and Mr. Medley, you are here to prove to Mr. Medley Sr. that you are indeed his sons. Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. Ms. Johnson, you grew up without a father for 26 years and claimed that when you finally found the defendant, he claimed he didn't know you existed. Yes, Your Honor. Now you've petitioned the court for a paternity test to prove he's your father. Yes, Your Honor. The trial began with Mr. Heron and Mr. Medley Jr. telling the court how awful it was to grow up without their father. But Medley Sr. had grave doubts. Medley Sr., you submitted a whole list of doubts. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. When I uh, met her, I met her when I was playing in a band, which was about maybe three blocks from where she lived. She would come, she would be there, you know. And after about four weeks, she came up and introduced herself to me. But as time went on, I started hearing rumors that uh, she was having sex with other men. But the brother duo did not play along and believed that Mr. Medley was denying them for some other reason. He's denying me, it's because when his mother died, he was nowhere in our lives before then. She Everything. treated us like we was her grandkids. When she and she her. told us, no matter what your daddy say, you guys are always going to be my grandkids. And that hurts me so much to hear this man sit here in this courtroom and lie to you like that. Do our do our door not look like you? You looking at yourself right here. Lauren could tell from watching young men judge her how their lack of father figures had wrecked them. Me and my brother and sister want to know why were you never there for us. I would take a DNA test and I would not wait 30 years yes. right. to do it. Well, there is a a lot of pain here, I have to say. I see it in these young men, their faces. And whether you are or you aren't their biological father, you have to recognize that they've been through a lot. I've been through a lot also. After listening to the emotional testimony of the young men, the judge called in for results, and it was proved that Mr. Medley was the father. First of all, my mom is not promiscuous. Second of all, my mom loved you. And That's why she had kids with you. Either. Mr. Medley Sr., if you would just take an honorable step in their direction, they would receive you. Yes, yes. However, now it was Miss Johnson who was already on the edge. Miss Johnson, in your statement to the court, you indicated you grew up not knowing who your father truly was. This is enough. I just need to know what's the name of my dad. So she told me his name was Victor Medley. But you are not to contact him while you are in my house. Miss Johnson even told the court about her attempt to locate and contact the alleged father. I set up a Facebook page and I finally found Victor Sr. I sent him a message. I said, my mom told me that you are my dad. When I told him that he was my dad, he was like, oh, really? Oh, my daughter, can you please send me your number and I'll give you a call. He denied my brothers, but he never denied me. We also learned how Mr. Medley abandoned Miss Johnson after accepting her. I sent you a message on Facebook and I waited for at least a week and you did not answer me. So then I told you, delete them pictures off of Facebook, take my kids on Facebook, we don't want nothing to do with you because when I found out about my brothers and they told me, you denied my brother to me. And when I found out about my brothers and you told me that they weren't your kids. Even though the second second set of DNA results was not what we were hoping for. It still brought the whole family together and even left the judge in tears. Mr. Medley Sr., you are not her father. Oh no, I thought she was my daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm proud of this moment. And that was a moment that I witnessed today. Who knew that some people's mothers would side with the boyfriend and blame their own daughter for false paternity? But that is exactly why Miss Co is here today. Miss Co, where you claim that uh, you have serious doubts that your daughter's boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is the father of your seven month old grandson. You say Mr. Boyce has been a good father to the baby, but that your daughter has numerous sexual partners, and so he needs to know the truth. Miss Co, you dispute your mother's claim. After initial statements from both sides, the trial proceeded like this. Ms. Cole, give me specific instances. From fights at school, hitting a police officer, not once, but twice. I get the phone call to go up to the school. I get there. I was thankful that I knew this police officer. He looks at me and he says, this is your daughter? He says, I could take her to jail right now. She could have a felony. Wow. The ruthless teenager even had cops come to her mother's house by accusing her mother of violence. 
What nerve. You stated something about uh, damage to your home. They came to my house. They bust out every window. They busted out my car. They destroyed my house. They broke out every window. That's my house. That's me standing on the porch trying to take a picture because now I'm upset and I'm like, you know what? I cannot believe my daughter is going to allow this to happen. Youngko tried to defend herself and failed miserably. I didn't think they were going to do that to the house. I didn't say mess the house up. They took that into their own hands. It's like, I'm so disturbed by what I'm hearing right now. This is excessive. Right. And right Over now, the top. She's really and dangerous. dangerous. And when the judge asked the daughter why she was acting the way she was, all she could say was this. Most children grow with their mother, they're not their father. I grew up with my father because due to the fact she abandoned me when I was two I years did old. I not abandon you. I was told she dropped me off when I was two years old and never came back. No. And the reason I believed it is because I haven't seen her until I got. Hearing everything that had happened, the judge came on the grandbaby part. So that brings us to why we're here. Because now you have a grandchild. But it's because not just one guy. There was somebody else in the picture. Now how many more it was, I'm not for sure. But I do know that there was someone else. So, when I find out she's pregnant... When the daughter was confronted by the judge over juggling men, she broke down in tears, which also made the judge sue the girl. I know you still love and are concerned for your daughter. You've made that clear today. Really? Because even after she had done all of that to me, I move out to Arizona. She calls me. She says, Mom, I need you. I don't have anybody. I, you know, she's about to have my grandson. What do you feel, sweetie? Tell me. You needed your mom? That's okay. We all need our moms. You, you don't have to feel ashamed and about I that. I there for you. After trying to reconcile the mother and daughter, the judge called in one of the potential fathers. Mr. Boyce, please come and step to the podium. I feel like um, from the beginning, I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, he, he made me grow more, you know what I'm saying, since he been around. So my mom, she she passed away. So you're hoping today, what are your hopes? I'm hoping that he's mine. So, following the emotional testimony from the defendant's boyfriend, the judge moved on to the results. Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. <laughs> Can I just, I just... I just Hug him? Absolutely. Can I please? It's okay, Barry. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. All right. Miss Lindsay is in court today to put an end to her lifelong search for her father. You say that after years of lies from your mother and uncertainty about who your father is, you believe you finally found him. Yes, Your Honor. You say everyone in town, including his family, knows Mr. Dannenbrink is your father and you intend to prove that today. Is that correct? Yes, it is. But the defendant, Dannenbrink, believes that he is not the father of his ex-girlfriend's child. Adam Brink. Yes, Your Honor. You admit to having a sexual relationship with Ms. Lindsay's mother, but say there is no way you're her biological father. That's right, Your Honor. I met her and uh, we just had like a hit and run situation. She disappeared on me. Then we got back together again and a couple days later she went, went her way and it just kept on for years that way. And there's no way she could be my daughter. Ms. Lindsay, on the other hand, had an entire story to back up her claim. Does admit to having a child, Mr. Danabrink. How many years ago? About 35. When I was about 16 years old, ex Mr. Danabrinks came to my house, accused me of being the child that they had had together. When I had asked my mother, she told me no, that it wasn't true. My mother and him had started talking again, and we became more close, I guess you would say. We lived right next door to each other. Miss Hampton also gave the court her version of the story. Miss Hampton, what was the nature of the relationship with Mr. Dan and Brink? Your Honor, this was like in the late 70s. We dated off and on, and I was involved with somebody else, and he was involved with somebody else. Five years ago, we met back up, started having conversation, platonic relationship, best of friends. Mr. Dan and Brink told the court that he was unaware of any pregnancy until now. Did you know about the pregnancy? I did not, Your Honor. She never told me that she was pregnant. She never told me I even had a child. You didn't Your tell Honor, him you, you were pregnant? Honor, I had no reason to tell him because he's not the father. So you were confident of that? Yes. Still, Miss Lindsay brought the conception calendar to prove that she was right. Calendar shows, um, for one, the day that I was born. And if you count back, um, if I was born full term, the conception would be between May and June. Your Honor, she was born at five and a quarter pounds. Been small. She was premature. When the judge found out about the brother giving himself up for adoption and another baby being stillborn, 
She knew that Miss Lindsay was deceived all along by her mother, so she grew a little soft towards the plaintiff. So what was your childhood like growing up? All of these stories. What is this like for you? I'm still searching for that, um, that father figure. Um, I, I had a stepdad at one point that abandoned me as well, so. So you had a relationship? Yes with your stepfather. For a small time until he had the, his own child with my mom, and then I was the step uh, the stepchild. But now, it was time for results. Case of Lindsay versus Dannenbrink. When it comes to 35-year-old Bobby Lindsay, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Dannenbrink, you are not her father. Sorry. This next case is about a grandmother searching for the actual child of her deceased son. Miss Walker, you say before your son Delante's tragic death, he had doubt that he had fathered the defendant's one-year-old son, Delante Royal. You claim you need today's DNA results so you can embrace this child as your grandson, correct? Yes, Your Honor. The trial begins in a classic way like this. Why today's results are so important to you. My son was tragically murdered. He, uh, the day of his passing, my son left something behind with me, and that was his doubt. And I am here today to get the doubt taken care of. Her child, her son, I don't know if that's my grandchild or not. When the judge listened to the tragic story, she expressed herself in this way. Touch me when you said your son left something behind. Yes, he did. And we want to say he left a son. Right. But you said he left his doubt. And that is very hard for you to carry that. It is. It's weighing on my shoulders, Your Honor. I have nothing but love. I want nothing but love to give to that child. But I can't give it. But baby mama, on the other hand, did not flinch a bit. Her deceased son left behind doubt. You don't think there's any reason to doubt? No, Your Honor. The reason why I say that, I have been complete loyal to him. I have their there's no other person that can say, this may be my child, this is my child. I am 100% sure that this is Delante's son. Grandma even explained to the courts why she was skeptical in the first place. So tell me what happened that day. I overhear them arguing. You know, they got the puppy love going on. I hear the arguing, I think nothing of it. So I go in there, I'm like, what's going on? You know, mom, she's a, a H, she's this, she's that. I said, well, why you say that, Delante? Cause she's here text messages between her and this guy. Miss Royale even tried to defend herself, but she was cut short like this. He, I called him my brother. He just a person I looked up to also. I let him go through the messages. He called me short. Problem with him calling me that because I don't, that's not nothing to me. I called this boy my brother. He's an older person. He portrayed it to me like they were sexually active. So your son was convinced when he told you, <laughs> Ma, you don't know her. He was telling you there's a lot going on that I haven't told you about, but I'm aware of. Yeah. Miss Walker told the judge that her son wanted the DNA test as well. Delante, do you want a DNA test? He laid his head on my shoulder. Shoulder. First he said, Mom, I think I'm gonna throw up. When she asked him, did he want a DNA test, you know, he looked around, seen her family members, he told her. He looked at me and Mom said, yes, I need a DNA test. So in front of everyone in the hospital, when he didn't want to ruin the moment or right. seem disrespectful. Or embarrass her. Or yeah. embarrass her. Following this, the issue of her not signing the birth certificate was raised, to which the young mother responded as follows. Your Honor, he didn't sign it because he didn't have his ID. When we kept telling him he was being irresponsible, he, that was not my fault. He even got his dad's first name and middle name. Okay. I would have gave him his last name, but he did not have that ID. So that was not my fault. Do you believe he would have signed that birth certificate oh, yes. if he had yes. brought his ID? And I believe it. Now, let's move to the conclusion. Here are the results. In the case of Walker versus Royal, 15-month-old Delante Royal, it has been determined by this court. 99.99% yes. 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 Okay, this case is a little tricky, as Mr. Clark has filed the petition to sue the defendant as she has cost him around $1,000 just because he denied paternity. Mr. Clark, you are suing the defendant for a DNA test for $1,560 for damages you claim she caused to your property because you deny paternity of her two-month-old daughter, Vanique. Yes, Your Honor. You say today you will prove you are not Vanique's father. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Bailey, on the other hand, 
believes that what she did was completely justified. Ms. Bailey, you say you were on fire when Mr. Clark left you for another woman while pregnant with his child. Yes, I was. You are 100% certain he is your daughter's yes, father. Additionally, you are countersuing Mr. Clark for $300 for half of Vanique's childcare expenses over the last yes. second. So the judge jumped right into the damaging part and Mr. Clark told the account like this. The damages you're suing Ms. Bailey for. Yeah, she burnt all of my clothes up. She came over there one day about me and her, my baby, and I told her the baby ain't mine. I'm trying to get in the house, argue with my lady. So wait a minute, she comes over your house with clothes, then burns them? At my house. Do you have evidence of that? Yes, ma'am. When Lauren asked the angry baby mama if that was his ex telling the truth, she agreed to it. I was seven months pregnant at the time. He left me and shacked up with another girl. Hold on. I, I was emotional. I was I mad at the up. time. And so I was like, you know what? To relieve all this, I have all his clothes in my closet. I was like, I put all his clothes in my car. I went to the gas station. I went yeah. to his house, put the clothes in the front yard, poured the gasoline on them, and I burnt them. What are you doing playing insane. with gasoline and fire when I you're seven so months mad. pregnant? What is wrong with today's women? I mean, preach, judge. However, getting back to the issue, it was later disclosed that Mr. Clark left his girlfriend for another woman. Because I was seven months pregnant and I was just so mad that he left me. You literally left me at seven months pregnant. Why didn't you leave me after? The bottom line is he left you to be with another woman. Yes. And you're seven months pregnant. Yes. But wait a minute. Mr. Clark testified in court that Miss Bailey was no angel. Yes, I know. So wait a minute. Let me get one fact at a time. You mad at him because he went to be with somebody else, but he's testifying that you cheated. I cheated because he said he didn't want a girl that parties a lot. And so he left and I cheated. Yes, I did. But I don't think that's cheating. You left, so I had sex with someone. One day after my cousin wedding. So you all were together. Yeah. You all got into an argument. You said you really didn't want to be with a girl that parties a lot. Though the reality TV judge was skeptical of the whole dynamic, Mr. Clark having cancer made the judge feel for them both. He started growing up big like it was a big tumor on the side of his neck. And so we went to the hospital. He found out he had cancer. From there, he got admitted to the hospital and he started his chemo sessions and everything. Before then... And you all were together when this happened. Yes. After good schooling of both sides, the judge moved to the results. These results were paired by DNA Diagnostics and they read, in the case of Clark v. Bailey, when it comes to three-month-old Vanique, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Clark, you are not the father. I wanted him to be the father. I wanted him to be there. She looks just like him. <laughs> Sometimes you just want something to be true so desperately. Miss Bailey, 